Looking for a fun way to win up to 25 times your money this basketball season? Test your skills on Prize Picks, the most exciting way to play daily fantasy sports. Just select two or more players, pick more or less on their projected stats, and place your entry. You could turn $10 into $250. Right now, Prize Picks will match your first deposit up to $100. Just visit prizepicks.com/fan and use code FAN. That's code FAN at prizepicks.com/fan. Must be present in certain states. Visit prizepicks.com for restrictions and details. Edit audio. So I'm working as the front of the house manager for a restaurant called Stick to Your Ribs. Yes, I am aware. You don't need to say anything about that. And the general manager, he likes me and he says, hey, Robin, I'm leaving this place. I'm heading to Pizza Hut. I'm going to work on the corporate side of things. I think you're great. I could get you an interview and you could manage a chain. And I'm like, Pizza Hut? But then he says it pays $35,000 a year. And my eyes are like saucers, you know, like Tom and Jerry cartoon, because that's more money than I've ever made. So I take the phone interview. It goes well. And the next thing I know, some lady is booking me on a private plane to fly to some town in like Rhode Island or Massachusetts, something New Englandy. I don't remember any of the details, except that I'm going to talk to the big cheese over at Pizza Hut. I, I can't. I can't even with this. I wake up that day before the flight. And I'm like, what in the actual fuck am I doing? I do not want to manage a pizza hut. No offense to anyone who does. It's just not me. And I immediately cancel the interview. I burn some bridges, which has never come back to haunt me. Thankfully, I can still order pizza hut whenever I choose. But now I'm lying in my bed and I'm thinking, what in the hell am I doing with myself? Like, what's my next step? How do I actually take it? I, I cannot be in a position where I just grab whatever opportunity floats by me. I have to be more directed in my steps. How do I figure out my path when I don't trust myself to do what's right, what's next? Hello, folks. I'm Robin Hopkins, and this is Well Adjusting, where I talk to people about life stuff, but, you know, not in an NPR way, more like a we're at the bar, and we're having cocktails, and I am getting into your business sort of way. Oh, we love a cocktail. Oh, and producer Steph is here too. Oh yeah, hi, that's me. Today we chat, well, starting again after you failed. All right, people. I have to say, I am so excited about today's guest. It is a person named Paji. I loved talking to them. They're a Twitch streamer, an artist, and they are in an interesting place, the middle of a very major life moment. They keep having this question. It keeps coming up for them. How do I figure out what my next move is when I'm afraid I'm going to fail and I'm going to lose time? How do I know what is right for me to do next? Like they're even questioning what's success, what's failure when you're going for something. And even more importantly, or even harder, what do you do when you're stuck? I mean, these are humongous, big life questions. And I think if we're all being honest, we have all been exactly where Paji is. So that is a cue for me to shut my mouth, and let's get right into this conversation. Um, Hi, hello. (laughs) I'm Paj. My pronouns are they, she. Um, Right now I'm living in my mom's basement trying to figure out my life. (laughs) Um, Yeah, so currently I'm working full time. I took a step back from streaming just to kind of figure out uh, what the hell I'm doing with my life. Are you still a streamer on Twitch or you were doing that or you were trying to make a go of it? Can you talk a little bit about that? Yeah. So I did it full time. I was doing it a lot and then working like side jobs Mm -hmm. and everything. And that was like my only source of, well, one of my main sources of income. And so the monetary thing attached to it is very stressful Yeah, (laughs) and kind of takes away from the enjoyment and because you're always trying to do things to you know, get further or get noticed and you try these things and you think they're going to work out and then they don't. And then you're like, okay, well, what the heck do I do next? Uh, Because you've already tried what you think you can do. And it's also what like trying all these new things and them not working out. It like really disheartens you to try even more new things because you're like, well, what's the point of trying? Because it, it didn't work out previously. So why would I try and your creativity it eats at it um and so i just got kind of run down and my mental health just became not very great from doing it for so long and then also with my ex he was afraid i was going to get too big on twitch and then leave him and so i was just like 
I don't think that's really. I think you just wait. Wait to okay. try to hold me down, turd face. I know. I was like, okay, well, I'm gonna leave you anyway. Now I am. <laughs> <laughs> the whole thing was like I was gonna provide for us with streaming. So starting streaming, it wasn't fun from the get go. Yeah. I mean, it was fun, but it was just like, okay, I gotta make money. A pressure the cooker. whole time. Yes. Yeah. So left him. Whatever. Moved here. So now I'm just trying to figure out. I guess my whole life again. I've done this many a time, but I think now it's like. Now it's different because it's like I'm going to try and figure out what's the most enjoyable for me and not because I'm doing it for other people or what I think that they think I should be doing Mm. and to appease them because that just never works. You attach your self-image to Mm -hmm. it so much that if things don't work out, you blame yourself. And yeah, it's it's way way more personal than just a normal job would be and it's just like a 24 7 thing live reactions and everything and you have to always be on Mm -hmm. um and the thing with twitch is like you can do anything you want on there and so i i really did that i would do my makeup on stream i would play video games on stream i did a lot of these paintings Mm -hmm. on stream um so you you know you got the camera on or you don't have to have a camera but there's a live chat you're talking in real time to people and then you know, anxiety comes into it too because then you're like rewatch the stream or rewatch a clip. And then sometimes it's like you could do something embarrassing or just like something on stream and it can go viral and you can go viral for yeah. that and then have to deal with that stuff. Thankfully, that never happened to me, but I do have close friends who have had a number of things like just go viral and stuff. And then having to, that's like a whole other thing that comes with it because like, People forget you're a real yeah. human being <laughs> a lot of the time. Oh, no. People feel free to say anything they want to about you online. It's like we've lost all of our sense of we might hurt another person. Mm-hmm. So what was the point where you were like, this is too much? Like, I'm feeling all this pressure. People are mean and I'm I'm having to create content 24 seven and I'm and I'm trying to monetize it. Like, when did that become like, I, I don't think this is what I thought I wanted it to be. Um, last year, my mental health, I was just like struggling with it, trying to figure out how to make it better, how to be a, like a, a healthy human mm-hmm. being. And with content creation and your first thought always pertaining yeah. to streaming like, ooh, or that, social media, that's good like, content. I yeah. should do that. I should do this and post yeah. this. And it's like your wants and like things you want to do come second. And so I realized it. It was just like, okay, it's like streams up here and I'm like all the way down here and it should be opposite. And also like, is the time that you're spending streaming, if you're putting out a persona, even if it's just a slight variation of who you are, are you really in the moment and enjoying it? Or are you working, you're working all the time? Yeah. You're, you're always working. Cause like, I mean, I try to be as authentic as I can be, but Sometimes I'm just like really low energy and like low energy streams don't always gain the most to like monetary, yeah. you know, traction. And so you kind of always have to be like up, but, you know, mental health. Yeah. But like maybe I don't feel like, like being up today. Right. Yeah. I mean, and, and there's an argument to be made. It's your job. When I go into my job, when I had a day job, like a corporate day job, like I don't get to bring all my shit from home into my day job. I have to like write myself. I have to walk in the door. Or at least that was the way I went into work because I wanted to continue to have a job. You can't just bring your crap with you. Mm -hmm. But there's this really blurry line that happens with being an influencer or being, you know, a content creator where it's 24-7. Like you said, you're always like, what's the next moment in my life that I'm going to put on out for everyone to see? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And it's just like that first thought of like, oh, I should do this for this. And it's like you forget like what you like to do for yourself. You have to have your own things. Yeah. And if like, because I started doing like art on Twitch and stuff and then started doing commissions and it's like, okay, well now I hate doing mm-hmm. art because it's not for me anymore. It's not, you know, relaxing anymore. Now it's just stressful. Yeah. And now I'm like, I don't want to paint because I have to, I have yeah. to. It sucks a lot out of you. <laughs> and so obviously like this is like a tipping point and you're just at some point you're like, I don't think I want to do this anymore. Yeah. It, well, I mean, I still want to do it and I still mm-hmm. do, but full time, it's just like, it changes yeah. it completely because it's not just like a fun thing you get to do or at least not for a lot of people because you have to worry about you know paying my bills the whole thing with that is like you want to have multiple sources of income and that's like hard to do because there's no manual on how to be how to be a successful full-time content creator no it's so winging it out so winging it 
Yeah, you can get advice and you kind of try, you try what other people do, yeah. but it doesn't work out for you always. And so I was really broke. <laughs> I had, I had savings and that's the thing. You want to have savings before you do it. And I had, you know, months of savings in case things went wrong. And then of course, things went wrong. I had multiple emergency <laughs> vet visits that took all of my savings. And then also with Twitch, they don't take out any taxes and so oh, shoot. all my savings yeah all my savings went to taxes and then it was just like okay cool now i'm now i live in I'm my mom's basement d- yeah <laughs> <laughs> now i live in my mom's basement <laughs> um so yeah so it just became just like just so stressful and so i was just like yeah i think i'm gonna i think i'm gonna take a step back and that's always hard because then it's like okay do i continue this do i like get a job because you know taking time away to make money somewhere else takes away time you can put into a stream and like lose all of that so it's like any momentum you have could just be gone yeah and so it's just like this whole game yeah (laughs) everything being an uncertainty is like when is the the breaking point for a person trying to do something creative to make a living and i also think when is the breaking point is something we should all be aware of in all the things like bad relationships friendships Mm -hmm. you know like What's the tipping point? When are you getting less out of it? Or just when is it worse for you, I guess? And I mm-hmm. think sometimes we're in it and we don't realize it until it's you're past your breaking point. At, at least I know that's for me. Like, I know I need alone time in my family. And I never know that I need alone time until I'm screaming at everyone. Until you've already and needed I, and, it. <laughs> yeah, until I needed it for like two weeks and didn't recognize it. Because I'm just not great at always processing what's going on for me right in the moment. It just takes me a minute sometimes to see, oh, that's why you're being a jerk. So back <laughs> to you. Um, so you're now at this breaking point. And is there a fear there of like, I might go down this Twitch path again and and spend a year and then turn around and be like, oh, this wasn't the right thing. Mm -hmm. Is that where you are or where you were? Um, Yeah, I think that's currently where I'm at because now I'm like, I'm going to go to school. And now I'm like, I can't afford it. So I can't go to school even if I wanted to. So now I'm like, okay, well, if I can't go to school yet, what do I what do I work towards? Because I'm like, I can't just sit around and wait because that's that's I feel like what I've done. This is like X amount of years is just like waiting. Now I kind of try to plan. I wait and plan. But sometimes I just like, I think I'm a waiter, but then I'm just uh, procrastinating. Or like, what's that line between, um, what, what is that phrase that's like the, the paralysis of analysis? Like, you could spend mm-hmm. so much time being like, well, maybe if I do this, maybe if I don't do that. I mean, it, it sounds to me like when you went to do the Twitch thing, you had a savings, you made sure that you had a safety net. So it sounds like you're very thoughtful in these decisions and choices you're making, but nervous. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And, you know, many times in therapy, it's like you can analyze and think about everything all you want. But like there comes a point where it's like you're thinking way too much. Yeah. And that's the hard point to be like, because I also have ADHD and impulse, mm-hmm. like hard, you know, impulse things. And so it's just like trying to find the line between, OK, have I done enough research? Have I done too much or have I not done enough? And I'm just winging it. And so it's hard. <laughs> I, I'm finding this with like a lot of people that I talk to, but I do think we have to respect the fact that globally we've been in a pandemic for two years and there's a lot of life changes that happened and, and you've had, what, what are those things they always say? Like the top, the top things are moving career change. You have several of the top five biggest stressors going on in your life right now. And you have to pay respect to that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And it's hard to take it like, you know, the moment where you're like, take a step back and you like realize what you've done. Cause I've, there's been many a time I'd like talk about whatever on stream and I'm like, Oh my God, I have done so much, but I feel like I've done nothing. <laughs> and so it's hard having been in the pandemic and I'm like, cool, I've been stuck inside for how many years? I feel like I haven't done anything. I feel like I could have done more. And so it's just like hard to recognize what you've done without feeling like you haven't done anything. <laughs> All right, people. Raise your hand if you have ever been personally exhausted by email, right? Same, friend, same. We are all so constantly inundated with email. And if you're like me, going through your inbox becomes less about responding to everything and more about just finding a way to keep tabs on the messages that really matter, you know, like the ones from the school telling me my kids are in trouble that I get all the time. 
Anyway, that's where SaneBox comes in. Think of it as an EMT for your email. As messages flow in, SaneBox does the triage for you, sifting only the important emails in your inbox and directing all the other distracting stuff, you know what I'm talking about, into your Sane Later folder. So you know what messages you need to pay attention to now and what stuff you can get to like, you know, like eventually after maybe a nap or I don't know, a cocktail. It also, and I I know I'm waxing poetically, but it has some very handy features like the same black hole where you can drag messages from annoying senders that you never want to hear from again. Bye, friend. Oh, and it also has sane reminders to ping you if someone hasn't replied to your email by a certain date. I mean, nothing like having to follow up on your follow-up, am I right? All right, best of all, you can use SaneBox with any email client or phone anywhere you check your email. I mean, come on. See how SaneBox can magically remove distractions from your inbox with a free two-week trial. That's a deal. Visit SaneBox.com slash well today to start your trial, and you're going to get a $25 credit. That's S-A-N-E-B-O-X dot com slash W-E-L-L. Go ahead, folks. Get it. So what's the area that you want to go into? Or can you talk about like where you are right now and what you're putting in place or what you want to do or? Yeah. So right now I'm just at the moment, I'm like, okay, to be able to do anything else, I got to be financially stable. And so I found this job and I'm trying to work. And then what comes after that is like, okay, besides making money, what do I want to do? And so I thought maybe I'll go to school. Maybe I'll do graphic design because I like art and I want to do more artsy things. But then, you know being afraid to make art or creativity a career when I just did something similar. And then also I can't afford it. So I'm like, okay, I just really want to make art for not a living, but just like, that's what I want to spend my time on. And so I want to paint and I want to do murals and stuff like that. But then it's just like, okay, how do I even get started with that? And like, another thing with ADHD is like, okay, there's this cool thing, this craft, I got to get all this stuff to do it. Oh, yeah, and then yeah. There's been so <laughs> many be times up. I've done that. And I'm like, cool, <laughs> now I have all this stuff and I'm, uh, well, <laughs> I'm going to get back in bed. Yeah. <laughs> but I spent too much effort on it. So, yeah. Well, I wonder if, like, I was just talking to a friend and her son is just coming out of college and he just got a promotion at a job that he doesn't like or doesn't want. And, and, and I was like, congratulations, but he, and he's like, he's like, I want to be in sports. And I was like, well, that's a really big field. Like what, what do you want to do? If you go down a path, that's not the path you want to go on. You can get into the golden handcuffs. Like you start making money and you start getting promoted. And then to go on another career track, you have to accept less money. And and it gets hard to do that. Cause like, it's one thing to be eating ramen at 23. It's another thing to be doing it when you're 43. That's not cute anymore. But one of the things that I was thinking for him, and it makes me think about it for you too, is like, what are the things that you could do that would give you experience to see if it's the thing that you like in that area that might bring you income at the same time that might like two birds, one stone, Mm -hmm. like freelance design work. You know, mm-hmm. is is that something that you could look into doing to to just see, like, to put your foot in the water and see if it's something you like or enjoy mm-hmm. and make, make money at the same time? I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. I think it becomes with, like, okay, I need to learn a little bit of the skill and getting the, like, discipline. Self-discipline to learn a new skill, to be able to use that skill to do whatever you want to do. Cause like I've got very, very little skill in graphic design. And so that would be a good step to do. Um, but then having to try and learn that is like hard. Cause I'm like, okay, do I need this skill or do I, is this going to be a waste of well, time? I think we can get in our head a lot about what we need or don't want. Like one of the things I learned in business is that people are just full of shit. Like, I mean, I, I like, <laughs> I've said this before, like I, I worked with this guy and he's one of the experts on the show and he's, he's, fucking amazing leader. But one of the things I learned from him is that sometimes he just says things louder than everyone else and with a lot of confidence and it sounds really thought out. And like afterward, I'll be like, did you like, you really, you think that's for sure? And he's like, I don't know. Let's see. But he was able to lead a company and everyone followed him because he, he goes for it and he just moves something forward. And then he's able to say, okay, this worked, this didn't. 
But I wonder if maybe you just need to be practiced at saying things louder. Yeah. Take up more space. Yeah. That's been hard trying to be loud with my voice. I can see that, by the way. I can see that. I want you to be more brash and louder already. I want you to be as <laughs> fabulous as your hair. <laughs> Oh, thank you. Thank you. Um, I need to be more like that with my brain because it's like, it's like I'll have these thoughts. I'm like, okay, I want to do this and this. And it's like, okay, well, maybe we'll do that. Maybe we'll do that. But it's like, I need to listen to my brain being like, no, we're going to do this. Or I want to do this. Let's try it out. And I'm like, well, but maybe I should be like, okay, fine. <laughs> Let's do it. Well, like, let me ask you this question. What is the worst that can happen? If you step it forward you have more life experience now. If it doesn't work out, if you don't make it a failure on your part, it's not a failure. It's just more mm -hmm. information that you can use for your next step forward or to the right or to the left. Yeah. It's not linear. You know, it's like you take a step, mm -hmm. you go over here, you're over here. Yeah. You never know unless you start. Yeah. So it's just like, I never know if I make that joint. Like, if I never would have started streaming, I never would have made it like a four year thing. Because there's been... Many a time in my life, I've done that when I had the brain power too. Like when I went to school, I was just going to get like my two year degree, whatever. And then I took like one class in like plant science. And then I ended up getting like a plant science degree because I liked agriculture so much. So, like, I never would have done that if I didn't try this one mm -hmm. class. I used to do that a lot more and I wish I could get back to yeah. it. It's just like hard yeah <laughs> so now it's like trying to figure it out and do all these things but then it's like okay but is it gonna be worth it but making it too calculated is hard yeah <laughs> one of the things i learned i want to say in my 20s maybe 30s is that like the way that i found things out of what i wanted to do next i mean i feel like i'm fortunate that i often know what i want generally speaking i'm like i want that and then i want that i want that like it's like i'm moving too fast and then i my problem is more i'm never I'm never in the moment because I'm already like, okay, I got that. What's next? Mm -hmm. And that's just as it's, it's a different problem, but I'm not in the moment and I'm not experiencing joy. And like, it seems like mm -hmm. yours is the flip side of that where it's like, you're, you don't want to make the mistake, but I think the same solution might work. Like moving it forward. I found out what I don't like, mm -hmm. you know, like I was a stand up at one point and I liked the art of it and I liked the process of it. But I was always like, oh, these hours. Am I really going to be like 40 and doing a set at midnight? Like, no, mm -hmm. that's not happening. I'm mm -hmm. going to bed at nine. But what I liked about it was having my own voice. And so then I took my voice and moved it over to like writing. It was just fine tuning mm -hmm. as I went. But none of that was a failure. I'm glad I had that time and that experience. And I, I wonder what what like how you would get yourself back to just trying again without the fear. Yeah, I think one of the main, main things is like having, now I have a job mm -hmm. and I'm like, okay, once I, this all comes in, I don't have to worry about money. And that's been nice because then it's like, now my days off are actually days off. Mm -hmm. And so I can actually put that to use. And so I have like a big thing I'm going to paint on and I keep doing every little little by little just actually start on it and I'm actually going to start on it yeah today. you are I, start, I said I was going to yesterday but it, it didn't work out but today I will <laughs> so now my my off days can actually be my off days and I can you know make strides to do the art that I want to do because I don't have to do the art for other people to get paid to pay my bills and now I can just do what I want to do because now I have that actual free time. I don't have to use that towards social media mm -hmm. and stream and all this stuff. So now it, it feels better to be able to do the art now. So I think I'll actually be able to, you know, get myself to do it. And there's no like, it's nice because there's no start or stop time on it. Yeah. Because when I would stream it, it'd be like, okay, I'm going to start and finish this painting on stream. And then now it's like, okay, I'll work on it when I can and I have the spoons too and I actually use my days off to relax. Mm -hmm. What's mm -hmm. that? <laughs> well, and if you're not judging yourself and, you know, all the dates are arbitrary, like it's whatever you mm -hmm. decide, wherever you need to be or whenever you want to be, you've made that up. Yeah. And maybe if you're bringing the art back into yourself personally and you're bringing joy back in and you're, it might be a decompression and a rest that you need and then who knows what can show up because you're then then there's space yeah. for thoughts to come in. There's no space for thoughts yeah. when you're just like, da, 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 you know, mm -mm. yeah, we knew you know that space for growth. Yeah. So and then, yeah, because that's been, the, you know, 
having looking back and stuff on whatever I've done and looking at old paintings and I'm like, I didn't know I could do that. And then you see like a few months later, you're like, I didn't know I could do that whenever I had thought I couldn't do that. Mm -hmm. So it's like that whole progression. It's sometimes it's just what you need. You know, I don't think we're programmed for self-care. We're programmed to like what's next or at least, you know, this generation because everything is so Mm -hmm. immediate and all the time. And the the FOMO, fear of missing mm-hmm. out, that that thing is like ruled my life, and I'm tired yeah. of it. <laughs> say say more about that. What are what are you what are you worried about? Um, just like because especially in like the streaming space, I was just always like scrolling social media, and looking for opportunities, and looking for this and that and this and that, but not doing anything to work towards anything because I would feel like I was missing out on things that I could be getting if I were. It, like yeah. there right then and so it's just like just waiting around it's not doing anything so it's just like hard to be like okay well can I do both it's like not really <laughs> so I, I, do, I do think for like Gen Zers and Millennials it's like really difficult because everything has been squished together with social media and with your with your lives it's like your life is your content is your career is your and it's all happening and it's never off You know, it's Mm -mm. like long gone are the 1950s where the, you know, it was, of course, just the dad, you know, with his lunchbox. Mm -hmm. He went to work from nine to five and he worked at the same company for 35 years. And then he was on a pension. Mm -hmm. Like, it's just we're so far from that. Oh, my God. Yeah. And there's there's so many different, like, if it's like a picture with like a subway map with offshoots, there's so many offshoots that have come from that that have impacted what you all have to go through. You know, from Mm -hmm. people being mean to uh, it's never off to, you know, there's just all these little tree branches that make it Mm -hmm. hard. And Mm -hmm. the only thing I can think to do is to say, slow it down and just figure out what your next step is and don't put any pressure on it. Yeah. Yeah. I think that's like the best thing you can do because there's been so many things I know myself and others have found out that can do with their lives that they would have never thought of. If they didn't like think about what they really wanted to do and they may be being like, okay, well, what if I tried this? And what if I tried this and seeing that, but trying not to let the other factors like shape it because it's like, okay, well, I want to do this, but I can't afford it or I can't do this. Um, And so like, that's a huge thing, especially with my generation and whatever. It's just like, uh, we can't afford to do anything that I want to do. So trying to figure that out in itself has been a lot, but. Well, I mean, this is where I feel like I sound like an old bitch, but I feel like I I call bullshit on that sometimes, not you, but on the argument of time and money. Time and money are two things that we use a lot to get in our own way from when we're afraid, like to stop Mm -hmm. ourselves. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Because you can find the time, like, you know, I wrote a book from 6 a.m. to 7 a.m. while I had a full-time job, while I had one kid and was pregnant with another one. Now, granted, nobody's bought that book, but it exists and it is written and it has it's still it, a book. It, I've never it has a gone book. through four drafts. Someday someone might buy it. But the you know what the point is is like everything can be done in 45 minute spurts. Is it gonna take longer? Mm-hmm. Did it take me a couple of years? Yep. But yeah, it did it. So it's like I do think mm-hmm. I do think that's why I just keep saying smaller is better, small chunks. That first step, if you if you make the first step I'm going back to college and I'm going to know where it is and I'm going to, this is the degree program. You're going to fail. The first step should just be like, I got online and I researched a graphics program. Boop. That's Mm -hmm. it. Small, manageable. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. It's just like the pressure being like, I have to figure it all out right Mm -hmm. now. But it's like, like you said, like the small bursts, you appreciate it more too, I feel like. But then it's like having to reshape from, okay, I'm going to put all this little spurts of time into mm-hmm. things but then it's just like okay well i wasted that time in the end but it's like did you really waste no, it it's never a That's waste a thing trying to reshape it it's hard because what i've done before is like okay well i spent that time on things that didn't work out but then it's like it's not wasted time you just were figuring out what you liked and what yeah. you didn't like and what worked out and what didn't it's not wasted time and like can you imagine if you didn't go for the twitch thing 
you might still be sitting out there going, maybe I want to do Twitch full time. Maybe I want to be a maybe I want to yeah. do that sometime and then not doing That'd be cool it. to try it out. And, and and I I don't know. I can't say this for sure, but I'd be willing to bet you had some good time in there. You made some money. You made oh, connections. Absolutely. Like there were things that came from it. It's all your perspective. Like reframe it how you're looking at that experience. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah, no, I I cherish that time. I then now I'm back to the point where I I miss streaming yeah. and like I can't do it. Um, and I could, but I'm like, uh, let's just take a way step back so I can enjoy it more. But now it's like I can miss it and know that whenever I stream, it's because I want to, and not that I feel like I have yeah. to. So that's like I feel like a huge step in itself is like realizing like okay, I can. I can enjoy it now that I want to and because it's not all the things tied to it. Yeah. So, yeah. You're back in your mom's now and your mom is lovely, which is awesome. Is there like a possibility that you feel like too content there because your mom isn't giving you that pressure? Like, are you looking to her to get that pressure? Like, is it providing safety or is it harnessing you from like actually making steps? No, it's absolutely safety because we had talked about that before moving in is like I... I can't be too content here. Yeah. And she's wanting me to go to school. And so I feel that pressure. And I'm like, okay, this is a little too much pressure, mom. I am I told her finally, I was like, I don't think, I don't think that's for me for now. Because I was also worried about that. I was like, I don't want to get stuck. You know, I, at one point I lived alone and I loved that. And then I had a roommate and then I went from that to living with my mom. So it's not just a roommate. It's like you have the whole like familial family aspect to it, which is different. But I like it more than having the roommate. So I think living here and then going and hopefully living on my own again in the future, I think will be nice. And that's just another thing we just identified that you know you want for yourself. There's more that you know that you want for yourself. You just saying them out loud. Mm -hmm. Yeah. No, I want to. By the way, we, you figured it out. I didn't. I I just took credit for it. What an (laughs) asshole. Look at what we've just figured out here. You figured it out. Yeah, no, I will I will live alone eventually because I know I liked it. It was just hard on the mental health. So if I do that again, I got to be more yep. aware. What's your Twitch situation now? Like, do you have a bunch of followers? What's it called on Twitch? Fans? Streamers? Followers? Yeah, it's followers. No, you got followers. Lovers. And, yeah, <laughs> lovers. I got 13K <laughs> lovers. No. <laughs> um, no, I mean... I was able to live off of it, pay my bills, and have a little bit for savings. And then it kind of switched from, okay, I'm able to pay my bills to, okay, I'm barely scraping by to, okay, shit, I got to figure shit out. So now it's like, I do it for fun. I still have, I still have the viewers, which is nice. I feel like I, I have the same amount of viewers as I did before and I do now. Yeah. And so it's like, there's not growth, but it's not like I lost everything. Yeah. I feel like you're not maybe you're maybe you're not done with Twitch in some way. Like I feel like you're gonna oh, find no. a way. It's gonna it's gonna land in your life in a way that works for you. Yeah. No. I'm I'm hoping I can eventually like because I love doing art and stuff on on there. But I'm hoping I can bring the whole aspect of like my art for fun and my art for me, but also do it on stream yeah. and share it with others. But because I want to, not because I feel like yes. I have to. And like, if, what if mm-hmm. you just went on low energy and all and just did it? And like, you didn't try to change yeah. yourself. You'd, it's just as if you mm-hmm. have a camera on, like Big Brother's watching. Yeah. I mean, that, those have been like my favorite streams to do because it's so low key. And there's sometimes I'm not even like looking at chat or yeah. whatever. And like they're cha- they're talking amongst themselves. And I kind of hop in here and there. And we've had like the most in-depth like amazing conversations when I've done art streams. And so I would, I want to incorporate them more. One day I'm going to make a damn mural. <laughs> well, your next step is bringing some joy back to you and art, yes. artistic Bring creati- some joy. creativity. Yes. And I'm so thankful that you wanted to share this with us because mm-hmm. we're all struggling and we're all just trying to figure ourselves out and we all worry that we're doing the wrong thing. And I think anytime we could talk about something yeah. and see that we're not, that everything's okay. I mm-hmm. think that's really helpful. Yeah, talking about it, I'm like, oh my god, yeah, I am awesome. Yeah, you I'm awesome. Are. And then <laughs> it's hard because then you, you're comparing yourself yeah. to others, but everyone's comparing them, themselves to everyone. So it's just like this whole yeah. cycle. Well, and it, you'll go out of this conversation and you'll have like a, an inflation that stays with you for a bit. But then it, it, it's like in 12 step programs, they always talk about, you know, you have to do the, the tools every single day because like, mm-hmm. you know, you when you brush your teeth yesterday, it doesn't you know protect your teeth today, like that yeah. whole kind of thing. And it's so you just 
one, not you, but needs to just put more in their life where there's more of these conversations, more of these things so that mm-hmm. you keep getting the lift. Yeah. Find the joy in the things you're doing as much as possible. And then the, do the things you have to do versus labeling it a struggle. And I'll, I'll let you know when I've done yeah. that. That hasn't happened yet, but that's what I'm working Perfect. on. Perfect. I'll read yeah, that book. Exactly. <laughs> I will write that book and then it will live in my drawer next to the other book. Perfect. <laughs> Next to my unfinished paintings. <laughs> and by the way, by the way, and by the and way, by the way, by the way. Oh, and by the way, here's a little hot tip. If you are putting a lot of pressure on what comes next, get out of your own head. Here's what I want for you. I want you to ask friends for advice. Go see an expert if that feels right. Just try to take the question out of your own head and get some other perspectives. I truly believe that you will be amazed at what shows up when you let some other folks chime in to the mess that you've been yammering about in your own head. Okay, you know what I'm saying? Okay, people, it is the time in the show everyone has been waiting for where I shut up. Yes, yes. We could stop listening to me now. And we are going to get some expert advice from someone who knows about what to do when you are stuck in life. Take it away, Dolores. Sometimes it becomes very difficult to uh, move if you're always moving into the unknown. And you don't have a good relationship with the unknown. You see, we, most of the time we think we should know everything. So when I don't know, and I don't want to take a step to find out, there's nothing I can do on that path. So maybe I could take a step to the side and just do something I can do. And I can get maybe some joy out of just doing what I can do. Because I'm pretty sure that, you know, we spend a lot of time and energy talking about what didn't work. And so... We don't have the energy to create something new. And sometimes it's uh, frightening what we're discovering about ourselves. Maybe we're not who we thought we were. And then what do you do? If I'm not who I think I am, who am I? Age old question, but where can I take a step? Where can I take a step? And, and let it be all right that I can't take that step or any of those. I can't do any of those. But maybe I could do that. Well, you ought to start a gratitude journal. Begin to get clear about what we have to be grateful for. Start every day off with gratitude. Take the pressure off by getting clear. <laughs> My life is incredible. Begin to get grateful every day. Simple. I got that from Oprah. (laughs) Ooh, Dolores, Dolores, Dolores. That was ever so helpful, as always. Thank you. All right, folks, that's a wrap on this little episode. But before we go, I do want to say thank you, Paji, for opening up your brain and sharing your struggle and letting us be a part of that conversation. For more Robin, and you may need that. You probably don't need it, but like if you do, you can follow me at Real Rob Hops on all the platforms, all the socials, as the kids today say. Well Adjusting is an edit audio original, exec produced by Steph Colburn and Robin Hopkins. Thank you to Maria Passingham, Kathleen Speckert, and the whole edit audio team. Oh, hey, before you take out those AirPods, this show is just for entertainment. If you are in need of help, please, please, please reach out to a professional. Go ahead and get that help. You deserve it. Looking for a fun way to win up to 25 times your money this basketball season? Test your skills on Prize Picks, the most exciting way to play daily fantasy sports. Just select two or more players, pick more or less on their projected stats, and place your entry. You could turn $10 into $250. Right now, Prize Picks will match your first deposit up to $100. Just visit prizepicks.com slash fan and use code FAN. That's code FAN at prizepicks.com slash FAN. Must be present in certain states. Visit prizepicks.com for restrictions and details.